Sint Louis in uh, Amerika. Zou je niet denken, uh, die staat bekend om uh, comics maken. Maar niks is minder waar. Ik heb de eigenaar uh, een paar maanden geleden vorig jaar heb ik die ontmoet. Het verhaal komt zo. Maar uh, we gaan nu naar uh, een comiczaak met de meest moeilijk uitspreken naam. Apotheosis, comics en lounge. En die lounge is namelijk gek. Dit is zoals een comicwinkel eruit hoort te zien. Een hele hoop posters. Een hele hoop andere dingen. New comics. En iedereen is hier hard aan het werk. Hi Martin. Hey, how are so, you? This is not rehearsed. Sure, 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 yeah. This sounds. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Tell us where are we? And so who we're are you? Apotheosis Comics in the heart of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we're on South Grand. Um, and so we've been here for about six years now. And we actually met at CIA when you were visiting Amsterdam. I did, that's true, yeah. So a cool story, I was at uh, uh, visiting Amsterdam on my European trip last year and I hit up every local comic shop in, every, in Paris, London and Amsterdam and CIA Comics was by far my favorite because it was a wild experience and I've never seen that many comics before in my life. And I returned the favor and that's why we are now in that's St. Right, yeah. Louis. When you say you're going to come here, I was like, you ain't coming to St. Louis. For what <laughs> kind of trip is that? That's nuts. But I'm glad you're here, man. It's good to see you. Take us on a tour. To sure. Because this, this is not your typical comic Correct. book story. Yeah, so I will, uh, let's start off with why it's not so typical. So we are the only comic book store and bar. So we also have a, uh, uh, our waiting for shipment of kind of drinks this afternoon, so don't judge us by our, our levels there. But so we're a, we're a comic book store bar that specializes in doing a variety of canned cocktails, beers, C, uh, THC, CBD, seltzers, non alcoholic drinks. We do have some coffee uh, cocktails as well. But you got real special coffee. We do. We actually we do. So we're starting to serve. Uh, there's two brands of coffee to be served here. One of them is called Comics and Coffee, which I think are based out of Pittsburgh. But you can order these through Lunar. And they've got these really great flavors like Green Lantern, they have Sinestro, um, they've got some other off-brand ones, they have Lord of the Rings. Uh, but we also have this really great company uh, that we just got in called Bones Coffee. And they do really great IP branded uh, coffee as well. Not only that, but it smells delicious. This is my favorite electric unicorn. Uh, this is like fruit cereal from back in the day with a little taste of like milk. It's pretty delicious. So we, um, you know, St. Louis is blessed to have a lot of really great coffee shops. And um, I tell people, you know, we don't, we don't make great coffee. We make coffee. And if you need it, because I'm not going to compete with anybody else, we're not going to do, you know, lattes and specialty drinks, but we can, I will make a cup of coffee and I'll throw some, some bourbon in if you want it. <laughs> and... Uh, one of the most impressive things, you got a hall, a hall of fame that is especially St. Louis. Yes, yes. So this actually is my collection of comics. That, these are all the comics that take place in St. Louis. And, you know, not a lot of superheroes um, are uh, known to come through St. Louis, but ever, over the years, a lot of them have. Um, probably our most famous St. Louis uh, superhero is Sink, who's now the leader of the X-Men. Uh, he's actually from the neighborhood that this shop is located in between Grand and Gravoy here in St. Louis. Um, and then of course we have a lot of times where superheroes were fighting on top of the arch. Um, first time Avengers West Coast and East Coast met was in the arch. Damien Hellstrom, the son of Satan is from St. Louis. Jim Lee went to high school here for two years. And so he uh, dedicated two books, Deathmate Black, which is the first appearance of Gen 13 takes place in St. Louis. His series Divine Right also takes place in St. Louis. More recently, Firepower by Robert Kirkman and Chris Sammy take place in St. Louis. Um, Manifest Destiny, a great story about Lewis and Clark. Uh, one That's actually one of our best-selling books. Um, and it ends in St. Louis, but all the stories are about these arches that are actually portals to other dimensions. So, uh, unfortunately, in 1973, Santa Claus was murdered in St. Louis. The Justice League solved the crime, so... Uh, Problem solved. <laughs> St. Louis is St. Louis, St. Louis. You, you are pronouncing it the, the correct way. St. Louis. Saint Louis. Well, that's even more, <laughs> yeah, but you're pronouncing it the right way. As an American, we pronounce it St. Louis. You have a lot of, this was a, a French uh, colony back in, uh, when it was first founded. So a lot of our streets 
are all French names, uh, but they've all been bastardized to American terms. Um, One of your uh, famous landmark is the Arc. Yes, yeah, well the Arc, the, so uh, this is actually our, this is our stage. So we do a lot of, uh, um, we do a lot of like, we do a comedy show on Saturday, we have a music concert tonight, we'll do other performances and speaking things. So this is our, um, if you stand on the stage, you're on a comic book. Like, so this is, we framed as, you're up on the front page of Apotheosis Comics. Um, and that's our, obviously our logo there, but you know, the arch is what our, if people are known, for, uh, what people know St. Louis for, but the original logo was actually this guy up here, which is called the Apotheosis of St. Louis. And that was given to us by King Louis, the, the one right before it got his head cut off. And he gave us this giant statue, which is in front of the St. Louis Art Museum, which I hope you go see while you're here. And uh, that was given to us because the French king said that St. Louis was gonna become the apotheosis of American cities, the greatest city um, in America, in the world. So um, we took our name from that statue, you know, the apotheosis, because apotheosis is a double meaning. So in Joseph Campbell's uh, heroic journey, the apotheosis is right in the middle. So it's actually in the, in the arch there, it's not there. And um, apotheosis, is the point in a hero's journey where they have to overcome a great challenge to become a hero, or they have to decide to return and go back. So it's the, it's the origin story of a superhero. And so we thought it was really, it was a perfect uh, perfect meaning. Not only does it mean it's gonna become the greatest, but also it's, it's a, a part of the heroic journey. So uh, for a comic book store in St. Louis, I thought that was the perfect uh, fit. And you also uh, incorporated the arch into something oh, completely yeah. different. Yes. So we, um, last year, Neil Gaiman came to town. And he got the um, St. Louis Literary Award. And so I spent about three days with him um, doing stuff around the city and then culminating me interviewing him on the last day. But it started with him. So he spent three hours autographing 2,500 books. And at the end of it, I asked if he would just do a quick sketch of an arch. Uh, and he did, so he drew the first one here. And Neil Gaiman drew, so he put in the elephant there to uh, show the scale of the arch. And then, uh, you know, from there we had Matt Kent um, did an arch sketch. We had David Pepos did the Spider-Man, uh, Brian Hurt. Um, we've got Stephen Wacker, Spider-Man publisher, uh, editor, excuse me. Spencer Wilding from the UK, he did the, uh, um, he was actually Darth Vader in Rogue One. Robert Venditti, Ben Sawyer. Ben Sawyer is actually in Amsterdam right now doing a, uh, a study. The great Gene Ha from Chicago. Uh, we've got Kenny Porter. Um, we got Jim Owsley, who's a local guy nominated for uh, an Eisner for his book, The Atonement Bell. Steve Orlando. Uh, Russell Mark Olson, who is a, lives in the UK and uh, uh, did, did a book called Gateway City. And then some of our great locals, Dan Zetwalk, Amanda Doyle, and then uh, that's Brian Posehn, the bomber who wrote uh, Deadpool, but also is a comedian. We've also got we've got two books, two arches um, uh, waiting to come in. One of them's from Derek Kirk Kim, who did the really great uh, Last Mermaid story last month. And last night, Daniel Warren Johnson, he's gonna be submitting one as well. Um, I'm forgetting somebody owes me an arch, but I won't get it from them. So this all started because you know, Jim Lee being from St. Louis, I was like, how much would it cost Jim Lee to draw me an arch? Like two lines, right? And I was like, a thousand dollars, easily a thousand dollars. So we, we never- For I, him, and he's a thousand dollars. For him, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I emailed him a couple of times, I never heard back from him. Jim, if you're watching, we'd love an arch. Apotheosis Comics, St. Louis, Missouri. I, I will gladly hang it up. Um, so uh, that's how it all started. And so now it's kind of a fun tradition. Like whenever you come visit the store, you draw an arch and it goes in the wall. Guys, uh, floppy or uh, trade paper back store? We're both. We're both. We're trying to make. The, we're trying to. We may be making the hard decision to go one way or the other based on sales, but we'll see how it goes. We, we really tried when we first opened to do trade paperbacks mostly because that's where the industry was going, and it's certainly where our sales are. But people love single issue comics, and we've been able to figure out a good program in order to get people. Um, to buy single issue comics. And so what we do is that 
If you buy first issue and you like it, um, you want to wait for the trade, you can trade in the first issue and we'll give you the cover price off of the trade paperback. Um, so it's a good way to get people to kind of invest in um, uh, trades. Um, so, and when you come to the store, like one thing, like the, the queer community is very big here in St. Louis, so we make sure that we give them, there's a spot right in the front, we try our damnedest to keep this thing stocked, but it's so, we keep running out of books, so we're always getting new and more queer comics in. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty great, it's really, uh, it, it, it is so great to see the amount of representation in comics these days, how much it's growing, so it's very uh, good to see. This actually right next to it, I put, I'm an old school Superman fan, so this is a post from the 1950s. Um, and I like to keep this up here because, you know, I think there's a lot of people who try to pigeonhole certain superheroes into their ideology. And it's very hard or very, it's easy to remember if you're a comic book fan that like comic books were created by poor Jews in Cleveland and poor Italians in New York who were just drawing the world around them and they wanted a better world. So like the Superman, for the first couple of villains he fought was like a landlord, a crime boss, a governor who's gonna kill, uh, put a guy to death, um, uh, you know, for a crime he didn't commit, uh, a wife beater, like, they drew the world around them and that world was like crying for change. So a lot of these superheroes were reflections of social change that, that they wanted someone to represent and who would be the best of them. Really so, cool. I have that up here because, you know, my career in politics before I got here is that's something I really want people to uh, understand about characters. Um, this is a poorly painted shelf that I painted and I need to redo it when I have time. Uh, this is kind of some new releases. Um, a lot of really great, you know, talk about expansion of the, of the, the, the media, but like now really great history books in comic book format. Uh, of course, you have a little memorial here to the great Ed Pisker. Yep. Um, got some of his books. And it is Superman month, so I'm highlighting my favorite Superman stories. And, uh, and also your first issues. That's Yeah, yeah, this actually, this is our, so we, we put the first issues here because, again, grab a series you like, um, and if you want to get the trade, bring the first issue back in. We will uh, give you the graphic novel for the price uh, and take the price of the cover off. So it's kind of a fun little program. It worked really well. And then you got manga. We have manga. We're trying to, you know, I'm a, I don't know if it's like everybody else in the world, but trying to get better at having more in the store. It's not something I grew up reading. Uh, but however, I will say that DC Comics did put out these really great Superman vs. Yep. Meshi books that were just a complete delight. And uh, this this honestly was the first manga I've ever read. Uh, oh, don't you think, don't you, uh, uh, that the sexual over undertones, like oh. Superman, black like Batman riding Superman oh, was kind of strange. There's, there are so many over, like manga, I think the translation kind of doesn't help me out at all because I'll get a book in that's solicited as something, but then the second translation comes in as something completely different. I think there was one book that was like called Help, I can't stop getting pregnant by the underworld demon. I'm like, what? <laughs> so that was a book. So we gotta kinda keep an eye on that. But, you know, uh, comic book store 101, keep in stock the stuff that sells. Try to move up the stuff that doesn't sell. Always make sure. So we always try to have, make sure we have volume ones of everything. So whenever something sells out, we immediately order one copy, number one, just kinda keep that running back yep. in. So helps out a lot. And you started with the comic book mega box yes so this is this is a the mega box is a program we just started where you are going to get uh you get this package in the mail this is a great introductory to if you want to get into comics but don't know where to start so what happens is you'll get this in the mail you'll, you'll get 10 issue number ones uh that just came out that month and uh you'll get 15 older issues and then inside the box a little qr code that, that sends you back to our website and we'll ask you what did you like the most about those comics? What genre did you like the most? We're gonna send you another box for half the price uh, with more of those books to see if that's, that's, what you, that's what you're into. So this thing is designed to help us make comic book fans. Uh, and it's only 50 bucks for 25 comics. And the comics aren't like, like garbage books. They, were like, they are our number ones from last month. So we take uh, the number one issues that, you know, that people can get started on like Napalm Lullaby. We'll put 10 of these books into a series for you. 
and into a box and then you can, uh, you know, again, if you want to get the tray paper back in a couple months, it'll be available to you. So they're really good, great starter packs. It's a lot of fun to do too because the conversation we've had with people who want to become comic book fans is, uh, is pretty great. I think we, we all have challenges with customers saying, I haven't read comics since I was a kid or I've never read comics, but they're wearing a Marvel shirt or they're wearing like, and they got Superman tattoos and they got the socks. They want to argue with you about comic book movies, but they don't read the comics. So that is a, I think it's an important part of our customer base that uh, people who are familiar with comics, but don't read them. And so our goal should be as store owners is to bring them into the fold and give them stuff that they enjoy because this stuff isn't written for kids. And this is this is adult material. It's very adult. A very uh, compelling it's literature. Strange combination, X Men. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Divine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, this is an order for something. I brought, I brought something. There's another X Men ninety seven. There we go. Um, yes, and then we also have a very robust mail program that we uh, keep up with. So we're sending out you know stuff. Uh, quite this many packages every day, um, and. Um, you know, we're just always trying to find new ways of creating revenue as a source. Well, Martin, what were the best-selling comics the last couple of weeks here? Uh, well, we have a real hard time keeping Transformers in stock, and we can't uh, can't order more of these. Uh, X Men '97 was our biggest seller last couple of weeks, um, and actually, you know, I've been really proud of the fact that people are starting to pick up Superman again. So it's your, uh, it's your go-to book, right? It's my go-to book. Uh, Joshua Williamson. <laughs> Joshua Williamson is a uh, phenomenal writer. He's done a great job on that book. And then also, you know what? Uh, Avengers Twilight by Zdarsky has been really great. Uh, that book has been phenomenal. Um, and we've got a lot of Godzilla fans in the store, so all the Godzilla books sell out pretty quickly as well. And of course, I mean, you can't go wrong with the Ultimate line, Ultimate Spider-Man. Uh, you know, we are, that's a rock and roll book that we can't get enough of. Uh, we also had Steve Orlando visit the store or via Zoom, so we built up a nice little customer base for him. We also got uh, the Spider-Man 2099. Uh, this is the Heroes Initiative incentive cover that the proceeds go to Peter David, who's got health problems. Yep. So they, that's a, that book that's going for him. But as far as trades go, uh, DC vs. Vampires. I mean, this is a fun, fun out of continuity book that uh, you know, Otto Schmidt, is, his artwork in here is great. You got James Tinian, you know, everything he touches is gold these days. And uh, the world building he does in this is pretty phenomenal. It's a great, it's just, it's just so beautiful, it's so much fun. And, uh, but I will tell you a secret though, not a secret, but actually it's just a fact. During the uh, first couple months of the pandemic, our best-selling book, I don't know if you, I would ask you to guess it, but you never would. <laughs> The book that we sold the most that we had to keep, and when we were very hard to get any books out of them, was My Little Pony Meets Transformers. Because <laughs> it was, uh, Tony Fleeks was writing it, but it was just a fun, lighthearted book that um, during those opening days of the pandemic, people just wanted something not heavy. And I think we must have sold 50, 60 copies of that book wow. very easily. I mean, it was just a fun, easy sell, so. I see a common line, that's Transformers. You're a big fan, right? I'm not, actually, no. You're not? No, no. Actually, we had the the, the talk with- uh, Daniel Warren Johnson. Daniel Warren Johnson, yeah. last, last yeah. night. And I thought, the way we, you were talking, that you were a really big fan. No, I actually, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I know about the Transformers. I like the Transformers. I'm not a big fan of the Transformers because I, uh, I just never got into it. Like I kind of, I don't, I'm not a big robot guy. What he's writing though, there's an emotional heart yeah. to that story about basically to everything that Dan Warren Johnson does that is so compelling and it's so easy to get to get into. Um, so uh, no, but I do like crazy crossovers, big fan of like Archie versus Predator, Ghostbusters, Transformers, Transformers, Trans uh, Transformers, Back to the Future, Transformers, Ghostbusters. I like all Django meet Zorro. Like I love anytime they cross over IP together is my my jam. So I love that kind of thing. So when the Transformers, uh, how I kind of decide to order things, if it makes me laugh, I can probably sell that pretty easily. And if I can convey that to a customer, they're all they're all in. Like this cover actually. So this is why Helen of Windorn has been able to sell so well. It's at, this at, this number one has sold more in the last couple of days than it has the last couple of weeks because of this cover. Because this beautiful cover by uh, Bilakis Ivy, Evelyn, is so amazing. Look at that yep. cover. 
and they're good series, compelled also. to this and they like that and it's a great it's a great uh, setup and uh, I think those two are going to have another hit on their hands. So every third Thursday of the month we have the comic book book club, which is you know, we select a graphic novel. Everyone, um, all the members of the book club get 20% off and they buy it. And then uh, we invite the writer or the artist to uh, join us. And then the book club members will um, ask questions, talk about the book, uh, tell them what they love the best, uh, best about it. And what's really great about it is that comic book creators are so open and accommodating that via Zoom or at your store, it's as simple as going on Instagram and asking them. And I've never, Every comic book creator I've ever reached out to, I've gotten a response from them. And they're all happy to do it. And we've gotten some really awesome guests over the last couple of years. And so this last Thursday we did uh, Daniel Warren Johnson and we talked about his, uh, all of his work actually. We were so fans, we we're, so, uh, we're such big fans of his. We've done, we Do a Power Bomb, we've done Murder Falcon, of course his Superman short story he did and Transformers being such a huge seller here in the store. So we, um, uh, he was amazing. And, and all the creators are amazing because they're, they're so honored that, or they're not honored, but they're appreciative that we're talking about their work and we're taking it seriously. And uh, it's just a really fun thing we can offer to our customers is giving that connection to, to the creators. I feel like making new worlds from scratch is oh, it's insanely <laughs> difficult. Because I could, like, just think my way through, I don't know, like a fantasy or sci fi book would make it like a bit of a half baked idea. Because honestly, you see that in comics all the time. You see it in genre fiction all the time. Novels, movies, TV shows, whatever. Like, It's like a little bit of um, like a drama with like, uh, like a, a thin veneer of like fantasy over it. You know, or, or something like that. Where it's like things can kind of get swapped out. Instead of pouring a heart and soul and finding a new way into something that's been done so many times over. Like science fiction, my goodness. You know. Think about how many amazing sci-fi stories we've all experienced in our lives and they're trying to come up with something new to say and a new way to show that thing. It's definitely possible, uh, but it takes a real pushing against the, the grain that is known now. So uh, that is a really difficult thing. And, you know, that good murder falcon, I basically had to come up with the character designs and then put them in the real world because it takes place, you know, like... They fight outside of a Starbucks. What is the outside of a Starbucks? It's like, well, I got Google images, no problem. <laughs> and working on stuff like, um, like the fantasy era, of the fantasy uh, part of Joe Carbon, where they go into the different dimension to Necroton's castle. Designing a whole like area, like, well, I don't know what the frick I'm doing. Like, I haven't <laughs> really done the concept yet for it because I haven't had time. And what ends up happening is like. You realize you're like creating these new worlds from scratch is just so much work and it gives me a much deeper respect for uh, people that are able to do that well and do it quickly. Thanks for coming. Come visit us here in St. Louis, Missouri at Apotheosis Comics and Lounge. First beer is on me. And also bonus, whatever, just wash your hands. So gek geweest, hey? Wie is het gek geweest, hey? Als je dit in je is het te gek geweest zijn. Hoe vet is om hier je boodschap elke dag te mogen doen? En nog even deze.